Today I got something really cool to show you. It's just a real quick and dirty review on the Pulsar night vision N550. This is a an interesting night vision scope. If you've ever played around with the generation 1, 2's and 3's um, you can definitely tell a difference between the group and the, the, the level of quality and this here is I would say it compares pretty well to the to the third generation night vision but it's still not as good but the price point is a whole lot nicer for us Joe Schmo uh, civilians this one in the retails for around thirteen hundred dollars I borrowed this from tactical gun review and we took it out hog hunting over the weekend and we never saw any hogs we never really shot anything with it but we did do some shooting in the evening and even my wife you know she was nailing the, the 12 inch plate at 100 yards with it with the AR and loved it but uh, anyways I'm gonna get it back to Texas uh, gun review and they're gonna do an extensive write-up I'm sorry tactical gun review but they're gonna do an extensive write-up on it on their website so if you want to learn a lot more about it than I am prepared to give you uh, that's check their website out they should have the write-up done fairly soon I suspect but in short this is what I've noticed with it. It's a uh, it's made of like an ABS plastic, so it's it's not aluminum. It's not really metal. Uh, construction on it seems fairly well done. It's not something you probably want to go to war with or anything like that, because I'm, I'm sure it's not going to be able to withstand uh, some 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 decent shocks. But um, recoil is fine. But you know, if you drop it or something like that, for the weekend warrior types like us, you know, most people get freaked out when they get a scratch on their gun. You're, you're not going to drop your scope anyway, so this should be just fine. Um, the features on it, basically the controls, we have the on off button here. It's a uh, rotary knob. One click turns it on, two click turns it to infrared. So if you're using uh, some kind of, <laughs> it basically it's on, but you can't really see anything in there unless you have some kind of night vision, I guess. I don't quite understand the point to that, but uh, Anyways, I've been using it with just one click, turn it on, and there we go. Uh, I'm going to throw some, roll some footage in here, but you probably can't see anything if I do it that way, but it's got a nice little eye cup here to help shield you from any ambient light coming in while you're shooting, plus it kind of gives you, uh, gives you that uh, eye relief uh, that, you, that you would usually get from a regular scope. It helps you gauge how long, how far you need to get on that. Here's your brightness control, and then you have a focus knob. Now, this is basically a CCD image sensor that you would find in a high quality camera, and then there's an LCD back in here. So, it's basically picking up a night vision, using a night vision camera, if you will, and projecting it onto an LCD inside the, inside the unit itself. So you can use this during the day. It's not going to be damaged by sunlight or bright lights, unlike some of the night vision scopes. But uh, so in a way, I guess you can think of it's not really true night vision. But I think it's better than that, and for that for that reason right there alone, that it can't be damaged or shouldn't be damaged anyway. Um, but you do have to focus. So this is not a quick uh, target acquisition type scope. You're going to have to set up on your, your area that you're going to be shooting at and then go ahead and sight in or focus it in. If you're driving around in the car or in the truck looking for pigs or something, it's probably not going to work for you. Um, it's a little big and bulky. It's not too awful heavy, but it does add a lot of weight to your rifle. But it has an external power source here that you can plug in. Got some RCA jacks here. And we, oh, I'm sorry, remote control. There's a remote control cable with a, with a remote control um, device that you can put on your foregrip so you can actually turn your power on and work your controls from your other hand. That way you're not having to take your hand off and adjust all your knobs. You can actually work it from something else. There's a video uh, output right here. So you can actually hook this up to a VCR or some kind of recording device like a DVR, showing my age there. And so you can record what's going on. I had three different cameras. None of them had the ability to plug into this so you can actually see what I was seeing through the eyepiece. So I tried my best using my video camera 
and my still shot camera to show you what the reticule looks like. And these reticules that you're seeing, they, uh, they vary. You can change your own reticule, uh, you can basically create your own reticule and upload it to the scope itself, or you can use one of the, the, uh, the pre-select ones in there. The battery compartment is right here. It runs on four AA batteries. I recommend the lithiums because it will eat up some batteries pretty quick. On the other side, we have a, um, a Picatinny rail, and that's for an external IR light that I'll show you here in just a moment. Uh, the USB port, and then we have a few menu controls right here. I thought the uh, for sighting this in, the windage and elevation was really cool. And I guess that's what you get for using a digital scope and not the mechanical ones like everyone's used to. Basically, with it turned on, you press this button here, and on your LCD inside, you'll see up and down arrows. And as you turn this, you will move your crosshairs into the position that you need. So if you're like you're shooting low, you move your crosshairs down. Then you press the button again, and uh, arrows left and right start flashing. And then you turn this, and you can adjust your crosshairs in that fashion as well. Pretty cool. It also has a one-shot zero. Uh, I read about it a little bit. One of the guys tried to do it. Um, plus, it was already dark. We were trying to do sight this thing in the dark when we arrived. But basically, you take a shot. You note where it was, and then you do some programming, and you can basically tell it to shoot over there. And it, he got it pretty close the first time, and then he tweaked it with this right here. But uh, the instruction manual, you know, you can, like most instruction manuals, you get lost in it. Uh, but anyways, it, it comes with a protective objective lens cover up here. And if you look inside, I'll see if I can, there you go. That's what you're seeing in there. Put some hand over the light up there. What you're seeing inside there is the actual CCD image sensor. And, uh, wow, there it is. So you can kind of see it. And uh, it looks like a Sony image sensor to me. But well, only time will tell if you take it apart for that. Here we have the built-in IR light. And then let me get the other one. Comes in a cool little pouch right here. And then... This here clips on the side to add just a little bit more weight to your device. And this, um, at long range, this doesn't do anything for you. At short range, it creates a nice, big, bright light. And like I said, with this brightness adjustment here, you can actually tweak it. So I found I didn't really need this all that much. But, but just by adjusting this, you can make it brighter or darker, depending on what you're doing. And I did notice without this light and in complete darkness, overcast, no clouds, no nothing, We're talking pitch black, when you're looking through this, you're not getting the crisp uh, television LCD screen that you would normally get in, with ambient light. It's very grainy, almost like a poor quality video. You can make out what you're seeing but the quality is not there like I was hoping it would be. So you definitely need an external light source in complete darkness. It does work, but the, the quality is just not there. But uh, For 1300 bucks, it's a very expensive gizmo to add to your, your rifle collection or your zombie killing stuff. But I, uh, yeah, I'll probably pass on it just because I don't get to hunt that much as much as I wanted to. But if I was on a property that had pigs, and a lot of pigs, and I could hunt it on a frequent uh, basis, definitely get one of these because this thing is the bomb. I mean, this is really If cool. you were to get something like this, if you had the money to spend, try to get yourself a DVR, the Digital Video Recorders. Arcos, it's a French company, I believe, makes uh, DVRs about the size of a wallet. And... Uh, that would work fantastic with this. What's really cool about it is it has a built-in LCD so you can actually see what you're, uh, what you're viewing. So you could actually hook up your Arcos or any other v DVR to this device and then with the cable you could, uh, your buddy or whatever could watch what you're shooting and you could record it as well for, for playback later on. I totally wish I had one. 
or had, could borrow one in time. But uh, like I said, this is just a quick and dirty review for this. I, I think it's really cool and worthy enough to mention, that's for dang sure. Anyways, thanks for watching and please subscribe for more shooting and gun reviews. It's a pretty well lit street. Um, I'm in the city. So, and there is a full moon out tonight in clear sky, so there is some clouds. I mean, uh, no clouds, rather, but some stars. But uh, still, to the naked eye, what you're seeing right now is completely black. I, I would have no idea that there's trees right there, but it's clearly, you can see them. But, uh, and then I pass over here, and we got some fences. It is range specific as far as the focus goes, so you do have to uh, adjust your focus for the distance that you're seeing. But let's go back down the street again. I mean, that's pretty cool. Like with the naked eye, I mean, I see that tra that street light down there, but I really don't see anything down there. I couldn't tell you if there's cars parked in the street or not, but with this. It, I think it's pretty evident. The cupping you're seeing, the little roundish, is the, uh, the rubber eye cup. I have the video camera jammed up against it, and so it's hard to hold it nice, nice and steady.